Hello class, welcome to another online lecture for organic chemistry. And today we're going to start going over mechanisms and reactions for alkenes. And because some of these are complicated, each individual um, set of reactions is going to have its own dedicated video. So you can sort of go through it, practice it, and examine it in great detail. So when we talk about reactions of alkenes, the first one that I want to go through is the addition of a dihalide. So when we mention the term halide, we're talking about halogens, which are fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Uh, and we are primarily going to be involved in seeing chlorines and bromines added to alkenes. Uh, you'll sometimes see iodine added, but usually it's chlorines and bromines. So when we deal with the addition of a dihalide to an alkene, we're looking at the alkene adding two halogens, one to each carbon that is involved on the alkene, or involved with the alkene. So when we take a look here, you can see I have an alkene, I subject it to Br2, and I end up with this compound here that has two halogens on it. Now, when I go through this reaction, it is always observed that I have 100% anti-addition. So hopefully you remember from previous lectures, anti-addition refers to 180 degrees between the two largest groups on the molecule. In this case, we're talking about bromines. And so when we're talking about an anti-addition, we're saying that the one bromine is facing completely up on the molecule while the other is 180 degrees down in the other direction. And you can see that here and here. These are anti-addition when we take a look at these. And this type of setup or this type of stereochemical consequence is always observed 100% of the time. So what we need to do is we need to propose a mechanism for how this reaction might work. And keep in mind, we have to always have an anti-addition. So if we go back and we reference what we know so far, we really only know, we, we do know radical reactions, but as far as polar reactions go with alkenes, we really only studied HBr up to this point. And we know when we go through HBr, we grab the hydrogen, we go through a carbocation intermediate, and then we eventually add the bromine. And we have Markovnikov additions and all that kind of stuff, right? So if I give you this example here, we're going to propose or pitch a mechanism that is based on the HBr mechanism to start with. So let's go ahead and look at this. Hopefully, if you, if you don't remember this, you're gonna to wanna to go back and look at the video for the mechanism on HBr, the addition to an alkene, okay? So what we're going to propose, we have our alkene here, and it is going to reach out and take one of the two bromines. The other bromine is going to leave with the electrons in the bond. This is exactly what we saw in an HBr mechanism, right? And that makes sense. So I come down to this stage here, and I have a carbocation in my intermediate, and that carbocation is going to sort of be the signal for the remaining bromine that left with its electrons to come in and complete or finish the reaction. And so, hey, that looks great, right? That's a plausible mechanism. There's a problem with this, though, okay? There's a uh, uh, problem with the carbocation in particular. So if you remember from previous lessons, we stated that carbocations have sp2 hybridization for the most part. There are some exceptions, but usually they have an sp2 hybridization. And they have a molecular geometry that is trigonal planar. Okay, Remember trigonal planar. Trigonal, meaning triangular, 120 degrees between each of those attached atoms. And then planar, meaning flat. So the problem with this is that if I go through a carbocation intermediate, that carbocation is flat, it's planar, okay? So think of a completely flat surface. If I want to bring my bromine, my additional bromine in to this carbocation and attach it, if I have a totally flat surface, I have a 50% chance of the bromine coming in from the top and a 50% chance of the bromine coming in from the bottom. Well, that's a problem, because if I have an equal chance of Br attacking from the top or the bottom, that means that only 50% of the time am I going to end up with an anti-addition, 
And the other 50% of the time, the BR is going to add to the same face of the molecule or the same side of the molecule that the initial BR was already added to. And that's going to cause a problem in the stereochemical outcome. So if you take a look here, right, if this mechanism were to be true, I should see 50% in a anti-addition, but then I also am going to see 50% in a syn addition. And that's somewhat of a new term. When we talk about syn, S-Y-N, we're talking about the addition of an atom to the same side of a molecule that another atom was added. So they're going to be on the same side of the structure, like you can see here. So again, carbocation intermediates are going to suggest that I have, or not suggest, they're actually going to prove that I have a trigonal planar geometry. That planar setup is going to allow a bromine to attack from the top or the bottom. And so if this mechanism were true, I should get 50% anti-addition, 50% syn addition. We know that's not true because we said that we observe 100% anti-addition and 0% syn addition. So we're going to have to come up with a better explanation in regards to this. We're going to have to propose a new mechanism. Now, what do we want to contemplate or consider in the new mechanism when we propose this mechanism? Well, we want to shut off or shut down the ability to have a same side attack for that halogen. So once I add my first halogen, I have to avoid a carbocation. I can't have that trigonal planar geometry available to the second bromine, or that's going to ruin the 100% anti-addition. Now the question is, what is the most plausible thing that's going to block the bromine from coming in on the same side? And the answer to that, if you remember back several lectures when we were starting to talk about Newman projections and a couple other things, is sterics. And so sterics involves two large molecules. Their electron clouds are starting to come together or clash with one another, and they would prefer avoid one another. And so we're going to have to have some sort of an intermediate that's dealing with sterics that avoids the other bromine coming in on the same side of the molecule. That first bromine should take up the bulk of the space. Okay, so let's take a look at this again. And this time I'm gonna show you the proper mechanism. Hopefully you can understand how this mechanism really results in the proper 100% anti-addition. So let's take a look here. When we are looking at this, we're going to have the alkene reach out to the bromine, and the other bromine is going to leave, just like we had before. But this time, instead of a carbocation forming, the bromine is actually going to extend one of its lone pairs in order to bond to the other carbon and avoid that carbocation buildup. And what we get is this structure right here which is referred to as the bromonium ion. Now, if you're doing this with a chlorine, you can also have a chloronium ion, but this is the bromonium ion, okay? And so sometimes I like to show this over here in brackets because it helps students understand what happened a little more. Imagine if you did have a carbocation building up, because we have a bromine that has attached here, that bromine is able to take one of its lone pairs of electrons and reach over to the carbon in order to form this sort of three-membered ring intermediate. The bromine now has a plus charge because it extended its electrons. It gave electrons up to that carbon in offering them to a bond. And the bromonium ion now has a large bromine that is wedged right in between the two carbons. So we're sort of blocking access to both of the carbons, right? That bromine is kind of playing defense and not allowing anything else to come in because it's very large and we have a giant steric clash or steric issue at the top of that intermediate. So now, if I take a look at the remaining bromine, the remaining bromine can only come in from the bottom. It does not have that trigonal planar availability to the carbon, and so therefore, in order to avoid a steric clash with the bromine that I see up top here, this bromine is going to come in from the bottom. And when it does, the carbon has to release or break the bromonium ion and let it retreat back to its original carbon. And I end up with my product. And my product has two bromines in a anti-addition. Okay. Now I do want to mention, you can have the bromonium ion form on the bottom side of a molecule or the top side. But the point is the bromonium ion should originally be on the same side of the molecule. That 
extra bromine that comes in should come to the opposite side. So whether it's up or down, whichever one you're starting with, wedged or dashed lines, the remaining bromine needs to come in in the opposite direction in order to avoid the steric clash. And that results in the dihalide addition. We always observe the anti-addition due to that bromonium ion intermediate. That can explain why we always see 100% anti-addition. Okay, so now that we understand the mechanism, here are a couple examples of synthesis, and I want you guys to attempt these, pause the video, and see if you get the answers right. I'll put them up in a second. Okay, welcome back. Here are the answers, and if you have any questions with this, you should think about or walk through the mechanisms for each of these, but what you will notice in each of these examples, the one bromine in comparison to the other bromine, they are on opposite sides of the molecule. They have had an anti-addition every single time I look through this. So hopefully you have found this video helpful. And if you stay tuned, we will continue to walk through these mechanisms and these reactions. The next one we are going to talk about is the halohydrin formation, which is similar in nature to the uh, dihalide addition, but there's a little extra we have to consider because we're actually going to add one halogen and one water when we get to that. That'll be the halohydrin formation. That's coming up next. And as always, thank you guys very much for watching and tuning in. Um, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have questions, feel free to leave them. Uh, subscribing will get you updates whenever I'm posting the latest videos. And thanks a lot, guys.